What up African world, it's Home Team here and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And today, I'm going to tell the story of Ose Tutu and the rise of the Ashanti. <laughs> And as always, if you want to support the home team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and home team merchandise are in the description box below. Many kingdoms succeeded each other in the region of Ghana. The Denkera established one of the earlier kingdoms at the southern end of the trade routes, but the most famous was that of the Ashanti. The Ashanti look back to the lost city of Asantamanso as their origin. In the town of Akwamu, there was a conflict over the succession of the death of a king. His sister, the queen mother, in Kansa had twins. The elder was chosen to be king. To avoid future conflict, Nkansa left the country with the younger son, Obiri Yuboa, and many followers, and they traveled amid difficulties and hostilities until the king of Bono granted them some land on which to establish themselves. This became the town of Asantamanso, and soon after Obiri Yoboa had been named king, a Denkira princess came from the north to take up residence. She had also lost an election, and her sister had been named queen mother. The town prospered for a time, but then some 50 or 60 years later, a bitter dispute arose between the various kingdoms and a civil war broke out. Asanta Manso was destroyed and its inhabitants were scattered. Except for one prince of the family of Obiri Yeboa who remained to watch over the royal graves, the Denkera soon exerted their power and made the entire region tributary. Obiri Yeboa's sister was married to the king of the Ashanti and for a long time they were childless until they consulted a celebrated diviner who found the means to ensure them a son. That son was Ose Tutu. Ose Tutu was a fine young man with all the marks of royalty. As a prince, he was soon called away from home, however. He was summoned to the court of the king of Denkira in part to serve as a hostage for his parents' good behavior. He immersed himself in the Denkira court despite his captive status, learning as much as he could especially about the manner of the administration and the maintenance of power, and he proved his worth so effectively that he was made a royal sword-bearer. This function brought him often into the inner circle of the royal court. There, he met and loved Princess Abena, the king's sister. This was imprudent, of course, since she was of the ruling family and because she was already married to an elder. Their love affair became known. It became dangerous when she fell pregnant and people knew clearly who was responsible. Ose Tutu realized he would have to leave the court and flee. He did not stay at home with his parents. To do so would bring death upon them. He knew the king of Denkira would send soldiers to punish him. He fled beyond their lands and there he continued to study the ways and knowledge of different peoples. In particular, he went to Akwamu which was the town of the diviner who had assisted his parents in the manner of his own birth. In Aguamu, he met a new diviner, a master of occult powers named Anokye, to whom he was actually distantly related. The two young men took a liking to each other and on one occasion, Ose Tutu interceded with the king of Aguamu to release Anokye from a punishment. So when word came to Ose Tutu that his uncle, Obiri Yeboa had been killed in a war with the Doma and that he was summoned to assume the throne, it was natural for him to ask Enokye to accompany him. Ose Tutu was made king of the Ashanti and Enokye became his chief diviner. Their first challenge was to settle the war that had brought the death of Obiri Yeboa and with Enokye's help and some skillful organization, Ose Tutu quickly and victoriously accomplished this. He unified his own kingdom which had been splitting apart and then rode the crest of that victory to subdue the neighboring peoples and to found the great Ashanti state that would rule the forest zone for 300 years. He established the golden stool of the Ashanti as a symbol of their unity. Princess Abena gave birth to a son 
and the son became the king of Denkira by the rules of matrilineal succession. He was named Intim Gyakari, and he was the king who had to face a challenge to Denkira's rule, represented by the growing power of the Ashanti under Osetutu. Matters came to a head when he sent messengers to demand the annual tribute in gold, and the assembly of the Ashanti unanimously declared that they would give no gold. One Ashanti went so far as to slash a messenger with his sword and cut off an ear. They sent the messengers back, filling the great brass pan of the king of Denkira not with gold, but with stones. Then, realizing what they had done, they turned to Enoke. He told them to delay the war for a time, while he prepared magical defenses for the kingdom. He also asked for volunteers, men who would rush to death to ensure the victory for their people. A number of volunteers came forward, and as a reward for their devotion, it was decreed that their descendants could never be executed. The king of Denkira also had a diviner, of course, by name Kenyeki, and Kenyeki informed his master of the steps that Inoke was taking. And Tim Gikari ordered him to do what was necessary to counter Inoke's magic. The two continued working against each other. At one point, Inoke challenged Kenyeki to undo a knot that he had tied in an elephant's tusk. Kenyeki's counter was to challenge Inoke to undo the knot he had tied in the water. In the meantime, the Denkira armies advanced on the Ashanti armies, and they retreated, acting on the instructions of the diviners, and the war dragged on. The turning point came as the Denkira army approached Kumasi, and Yoke predicted that Kenyeke would never reach Kumasi, and he was proved correct. The Andansi, a people against whom Intim Gakari had waged war with in the recent past, plotted and arranged for the murder of Kenyeki. News of his death so emboldened the Ashanti army that they attacked the Denkira and put them to flight. A nobleman found Intim Gekari playing a game with a concubine and killed him. They brought to Osetutu the golden bracelet which Intim Gekari had worn and the brass pan in which he collected the tribute and which they had filled with stones. Osetutu then established the Ashanti kingdom, and he was the first Asantene, the supreme chief of the Ashanti people. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>